Regardless of how they progress following this recording, Boston going 28-0 at home exactly halfway through the 2024-82 game grind is insane. You'll see a meticulous breakdown of every key to Boston's obliteration, the records they're setting, and the most important factor to this team's success outside of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who's also not named Drew Holiday, Chris Tapps Porzingis, Derek White, or even who you may think it is, the crypto scammer Peyton Pritchard. My answer to that question is one of many segments regarding the current NBA best Celtics that you have to stick around for. First, the Community Speaks shoutout goes to Quick Clutch, who says only players you can say are more clutch than Dame all time are MJ and Kobe. Dame has more game-winning shots than any other player all time other than Kobe. The buzzer beater stat is kind of cherry-picked compared to the game-winning shot stat. I agree with you on the MJ and Kobe thing, but I still think the buzzer beating shot stat from my last vid was an interesting one. But leave your take on the question at the end of today's video for a chance of both getting on the speaks board and winning free merch of your choosing. Jason Tatum has been the best player in the association throughout the month of January, as his 51% clip from three-point range is the best among any of this month's top 20 point per game scores. This stretch included dropping 45 over Boston's fellow number one seeded Minnesota Timberwolves just over a week ago which was tied with Donovan Mitchell of the Cleveland Cavaliers for the second highest single game point total in January. Against the NBA's best defensive rating, Tatum did have one early drive for an and one, but three of his first four field goals were contested high arcing deep range bombs. As the game progressed, he'd then however start tearing up the lane. Hezzy in and out cross combo gets Towns reaching before a Euro step beasts him out of the way. Hezzy tween behind combo freezes Kyle Anderson, or as they call him slow-mo, at the point of attack, leading into another Euro, but this time going left, which gets Tatum around Nas Reed. After this Spain pick and roll gets him switched on to Towns, Carl's going to fall for this stop on a dime hesitation, which opens up space for a dicey step back. Tatum. Here we go. Again with Town switched onto him, and also in this case slow-mo stunning on the strong side, a hezzy inverted crossover to his left gets Jason downhill for a beastly Euro step around two Minnesota defenders. Remember, it's the best defense in the association that Tatum's working on. He can make you forget that with how dominant he is. Empty side flare action with Horford set in the solid screen sees Holiday's bullet pass lead to Tatum pump faking and jabbing right directly after the catch. He then subtly fakes a sweep through left, instead attacks Reed's lead foot to his strong hand, and it's another forceful, widely extended finish. Here, he denies a Horford on-ball screen, and with the Wolves' ball pressure ramped up, Tatum's able to attack the pursuing McDaniels on a 20-degree angle, then power through him for the bucket around the top defender. Still down 5 with under 2 minutes left, the Wolves forget to change their pick-and-roll settings from switch to drop, so Towns again gets matched up with Tatum, whose signature size-up chains into a signature sidestep to cut it to 2. Tatum takes it. Yeah! Skipping ahead to OT, and we'll let the elite Celtic crowd plus the GOAT Mike Gorman do the talking. To the basket. However, then tied at 120, the Wolves weren't done switching there, so Tatum also wasn't done there, as this next size up leads into a Smitty, which forces Towns to commit contact that isn't called, but Tatum perfectly responds to that with one momentum cross right and another momentum cross left to fool Towns. Just nasty. In OT's final minute, following White and Holiday trapping Edwards, resulting in Drew getting a game-saving steal, Minnesota chases the ball back in transition, doesn't communicate, leaving Tatum wide open for triple number six on the night, sealing one of Boston's most impressive W's on the season. Like the rest of his bag, Tatum's rebounding has also been at the best level of his career, as his three 13 rebound double-doubles are the most at his position, and tied for the third most among all players in January. January. But before covering another Celtics top weapon, who has been terrifyingly just as good as Jason this month, in other news for the crypto thief Peyton Pritchard, he may have given himself some bad press by just pulling off another crypto scamming heist that was even called out by his own teammates, being Chris Dapps Porzingis, Svima Hiluk, and O'Shea Brissett on Instagram. But given Fast PP is leading the Celtics in plus minus in this calendar month, I had to write a segment about him. Pritch has recently been working his way up the ladder in terms of top bench producers in the game of basketball, as the Oregon alumni's four double-digit scoring performances over the last six games are tied for third most among players off the bench over that span. For Jalen Brown, 
How he's been going off on the NBA recently can simply be explained by mentioning that both Jalen's field goal percentage and field goals made per game in 2024's opening month are the best output on the Celtics. JB's a different type of focus, and when he's playing with that tenacious anger, can resemble a top 10 to 20 player in the association. For the first year Celtic Drew Holiday, it was good to see the champ rack up a second straight game of scoring 22 plus points, as this helped make up for the loss of Tingus Pingus. Similarly to that scoring, Drew's defense is also starting to resemble his prime Milwaukee Bucks-esque self. Some of his recent clamps are coming up later on in this video. In terms of the depth up front for Boston, Celtics backup center Luke Cornett gets underrated due to the fact that he's overlooked by fan favorite on a two-way contract Namiyash Keita, who Celtics Nation argue should be in the rotation. Having both Luke and Keita at your disposal for the playoffs would be a luxury if Stevens is willing to convert Nimi's two-way deal, given the injury history of Porzingis and Horford having a ton of mileage racked up. Stepping up for the absent due to knee inflammation, Porzingis in the starting five against San Antonio. Aside from getting dunked on by Wembenyama, Cornette was productive in a hefty 30 minutes of action, racking up what was tied for a season most three blocks. In his second start of the year, Luke also snagged a game high nine rebounds and was a game fifth best plus 11. For the man caught up in Cornette's logjam, Keita checked in late to abruptly record six points, eight rebounds, and two blocks in just 12 minutes. To be fair, he nearly fouled out, racking up five personals in that short span. Former Raptor product of Syracuse and the Toronto-born O'Shea Brissett made an appearance to drop seven points in seven minutes, completing a flashy dime from JB. Even checking in for Boston against the Spurs was the having been progressing in the G League 38th overall pick in rookie Jordan Walsh, as Stevens recalled him before the game, and he suited up for his first few minutes of non-preseason NBA basketball. Jordan may not have gotten the score sheet, but with the main Celtics down in the minors, Walsh's 15.8 rebound per game averages on 41% three-point shooting has been encouraging. Like it's been for J.D. Davison, developing close to the team in Maine has been huge for Walsh. A game before the Spurs matchup, Boston displayed their potential defensively north of the border. Watch how Horford and Holiday stay solid as quickly fakes this cross screen. Before Drew picks up on the slipping porter, Horford cuts off the post entry to force the kick out to Barrett, who Tatum stays in front of and forces the kick to Schroeder, who Porzingis recovers back to to force the swing to the now traded Siakam, and the closeout from the having flown over Horford smothers Pascal's attempt, forcing an air ball. After the Raptors run this zoom action, which features a handoff right back to the initial passer, Watch the on-ball pressure of Pritchard and the smart help of Porzingis to force McDaniels to beat them twice by first rotating onto Dennis and then stunning onto Barnes, which leads to Jalen making an ill-advised attack and getting swatted by Tatum. This time in a 2-3 zone, Horford and Cornett sandwich Siakam on the back side to neutralize his cut to the basket, forcing Barnes to toss it to Young, whose handoff attempt is shut down by the pressuring fast PP. Barnes instead receives it on Young's kickout, and it's Horford's positioning and lateral quickness, plus Tatum's backside activity, that force Scotty into chucking it out of bounds. On a separate note, the most important winning contributor for the C's outside of JT or JB, despite weird Celtics Twitter relating his image to a meerkat, has to be man in charge Joe Mazzulla, who's breaking the records of some all-time great head coaches throughout NBA history. I mentioned this in my video a little while back covering Derek White, but Joe's maintained his number one ranking among coaches with at least 100 games played in winning percentage. He has a great cast of assistant coaches, but Joe is the current coach of the year favorite by a mile in my opinion based off the fact that he's done a stellar job in all coaching aspects from chemistry management to rotations to assistant coach utilization to playbook implementation to preaching defensive fundamentals all boxes are checked for joe coaching the celtics to both the nba's second best defensive rating and offensive rating boston's the only team to even be top five in each of those crucial advanced stats let alone top two for a chance at next video shout out let me know down below the most important factor to the celtics outside of tatum or brown in your opinion dflow signing off